Will Death Sink the American Empire? Authored by Peter Ange via Money Metals. Will Death Sink the American Empire? So asks the Wall Street Journal in an uncharacteristically, uh, characteristically dooming article about the bull market's paper of record. They kick off with the problem, America is cruising into an uncharted sea of federal debt with a government seemingly incapable of turning this around. In other words, the uni party has set its course and there is no cavalry coming. The runaway train of deficits were currently adding a fresh trillion dollars of debt every 100 days in our way to $35 trillion debt. Meanwhile, the deficit is about to break $2 trillion mark for prospective all federal revenue under George W. Bush averaging around $2 trillion. Debt interest alone is set to cross $1 trillion, eclipsing even our bloated military budget that beaches quarter billion dollar peers in Gaza for sport. The next milestone after that is Medicare spending, which together with Social Security has its own $78 trillion unfunded liability, according to its own Board of Trustees. Outside estimates are even higher than this. Governments are rabid by nature, and now none of this is shocking. Governments by nature try to spend too much. Indeed, much of economic history is made up of governments desperately trying to finance their mountains of debt. Debt brought down Rome, first with hyperinflation, then with a gutted military that barbarians walked right over. It brought down Spain as New World Gold finances an effective government takeover of the private sector, and France, bankrupted by financing foreign wars, in this case, the American Revolution. The Qing uh, dynasty of uh, China collapsed under debt, and even Great Britain, who owned half the earth for nearly a hundred years. That's why we got the Magna Carta, indeed, constitutions as kings pleaded for more money. It's now, it's how we got central banks as first Britain and then the rest of the world licensed money printers in exchange for debt finance. To this day, government debt crashes uh, countries. Countries from Turkey to Venezuela to Nigeria are currently undergoing debt crises, with Argentina desperately trying to pull out of one. So how does it end? And with so many historical cases, we know exactly how this ends. History repeats itself. Investors stop buying government debt, shutting out governments and lending, uh, leading to massive austerity, soaring inflation as the government retrenches. Going by history, the government will cancel the trillions it promised starting with Social Security and Medicare, then pull back to where it can pay the Praetorian Guard and not much else. In short, once debt hits the magic line, Washington goes from sugar daddy to wild animal, and historically it happens much faster than people imagine. In Hemingway's famous phrase, countries go bankrupt gradually, then all at once. There is a ray of hope. Washington spending freight train can be stopped. In fact, we did stop it in the 90s under Clinton and Gingrich. From 1997 to 200, we ran budget surpluses totaling nearly $600 billion. The key was gridlock, two parties that despised each other so much that the only thing that they could agree on was to sabotage each other's plans. Unfortunately, whether it was corporate donors or golden parachutes for politicians, both parties have long since folded and are now eager to cooperate so long as they both get everything they want. So Democrats feed their activist army at taxpayers' expense, while Republicans instead give ammo to Ukraine. This all means there is a ray of fiscal hope. If, say, President Trump were to take to face a Democratic Congress that hates him so much it blocks everything he does, not an impossible thing to imagine. Or if you swing that way, a President Biden or Harris is subjected to similar antipathy from a GOP Congress. Or dare we dream, a GOP that actually stands up on the debt ceiling, damn the media torpedoes of what a couple of years, and it's a crisis in the entire country. We know which one Washington will pick, 
but it's ultimately the voters who run the joint. And this is on Zero Hitch by Tyler Durden. This is written by Peter St. Ong via Money Metals. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I really support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.